We're here today to talk about the ancestors of uh, this area and the artifacts they left for us to look at and wonder and be amazed at their ability to live many, many years ago. One of the things I became interested in a long time ago when I was a kid was uh, being in 4-H uh, and living on the farm that we still live on was finding a few arrowheads. And this was a little display that I had put together of some arrowheads that were found on our farm here northeast of Wolf Allen. And as time went on, they got pushed aside and nothing more was thought about the Indian arrowheads. And today, uh, with modern machinery, it's hard to find arrowheads anymore out on farmland. Uh, and some time back, a few years ago, we were remodeling a building and back in the corner on a piece of wood set an old rusty can. So was, rusty. This, was this on the Joseph farm? Yes, this okay. was on the Joseph farm uh, where we now live and uh, finding, lifting this can up, it was very heavy and it rattled. We couldn't figure out what was in it. But we had to break the can open because it was so rusty and found that it was a collection of arrowheads that had been put together since my great-grandfather lived on the farm, my grandfather and my dad, when they would find the arrowhead out while they were working in the field, they evidently dropped it in this can. And uh, so we began to wonder about uh, the authentic value of these as far as history goes. So we took the collection down to the Cahokia Mounds and uh, asked uh, the gentleman down there to tell us something about the arrowheads. And he was amazed to find that we had found these arrowheads all on the farm through the past generations. And uh, so he sorted them out by years and by Indian tribes. And uh, it was very interesting. So this old display case was something that my daughter found that was going to be thrown away where she worked and had brought it home. So we took those arrowheads that he had put in different categories and told us how to mount them. And we mounted them in this display of arrowheads from out of the old rusty can. Now, this is only a small sample of the arrowheads that were in that can. Uh, a lot of them were broken or pieces or whatever, but he picked those out that we should use for this display. Now, it's hard to imagine that uh, there were Indians traveling around, living, using the, the resources to live from the farm where these were found. Uh, one of the things that may have been an attraction to this farm ground here, on this farm there is a spring where water comes up out of the ground and across the road, about a quarter of a mile away, there's another spring and these springs run year-round, winter, summer, and that would be a good water source for animals, birds, and also for the Indians, which would make good hunting ground. So this is part of the collection that has been found through the years on the farm. Thank you. Uh, a couple questions. When do you think these collections were actually, what time period are we looking at from <coughs> When they were, when they first started picking them up, versus when they uh, stopped collecting them. Well, I think probably we'd have to go back to that 1886, probably, when uh, when, they my, huh? when they bought the crop. when they bought the farm and started farming it, and when I went to the to the length of time would be till modern times when there were no more to be found. About 1930s, I would say 40s. 
Fifties, maybe. I think there was some found in the fifties yet. And exactly where is your farm? Okay, today? our farm is located uh, northeast of O'Fallon. If you go out north Seven Hills Road, you make the stop sign at the O'Fallon Troy Road. That would be where the Joseph Ground starts on the far right-hand corner of the intersection. And how long ago did you uh, actually take that down to the Cahokia Mounds we to have them? We took that down about uh, five years ago or six years ago, and that's when they divided them up according to era and tribes. Okay. I noticed you brought in three jars. Could you talk about that a little bit? The three jars... Uh, This area was a good production area for raising vegetables and crops. And the Indians used corn as one of their good sources of food. Uh, corn would uh, could be preserved through the winter. And this would be what corn would look like as it came out, it was growing. If they started breaking it down for use as human beings, it would look like this. And if they brought it down to, to the finer part of using it for food and cooking, it would look like that. So corn was one of the sources uh, of uh, food for the Indians. Uh, they were very big in, in vegetable use too. Not only vegetables that grew on the land, but they use uh, water vegetables also as one of their sources of food. Do you think on the arrowheads that you have, are the majority of them um, utensils that were used for cooking or food preparation, or were they actually hunting tips? Well, as I understood it, uh, there's a, all different kinds, and depending on the era that they, they were produced in, uh, they were used for hunting, and some of them were used for preparing uh, animal hides and uh, preparing food. Uh, these up here would probably be used in uh, uh, preparing, grinding down food to get it used for human consumption. Okay. Okay, well, we appreciate it, Kenny. Uh, this has been Kenny Joseph. Um, member of the uh, O'Fallon Historical Society, and uh, we want to thank you for taking the time to come in today and um, um, share this uh, beautiful presentation uh, display that you have, and uh, we really appreciate it, so thank you very much. The Joseph originally bought their first piece of farm ground in 1849 uh, at the location we now live, and uh, they uh, have owned that ground in the Joseph name ever since 1849. So our children are the sixth generation of family living on the farm. And that our is, grandchildren are the seventh. Oh, and our grandchildren would be the seventh. You're right. That is fantastic. Longevity. So thank you very much, Kenny. We well, appreciate th it. Thank you for having us.